parent teacher conferences. I couldn't help the thinking. Um, that's great and all, but still feels like most of um, most of your child's success who's texting me most of your child's success is pretty much dependent on the parents and whatever you do for them at home because I've seen how easily kids can just say they don't give a fuck at school and then they just don't try. And so I was listening to everything she was saying, and every most everything was good news. And she's improving, and they're seeing improvement um, emotionally and with her peers and whatnot. But like I guess math is a foreign concept. Adding and subtracting, and lo and behold, it's we have my myself and and um, her mom haven't really practiced any of that stuff with her, and it just reinforces like the fact that here, as a parent, you there's there's no time to sit and not be. <laughs> Uh, I mean, essentially playing with your kid in some way that they're improving themselves. Does that make sense? Like, gosh, just playing with them is they're learning to critically think, and then you gotta like do these little games that are making them think and get better at adding and subtracting and writing and all this stuff. And I've been lazy at that, and I don't. Um, and I mean, I wish I hadn't. I wish I had been more, and I wish I will do, be more um, into that stuff. And there I go again, just wishing. And wishing's not going to help, but you have to actually do it. And also, during this whole first grade um, parent teacher conference, I was thinking back to when I was in first grade and I, I really don't remember much other than it seems like it seems like um, there's less emphasis on drilling and killing meaning you learn something by practicing it over and over and over again and I remember it was in first or second grade where you learn your addition, subtraction, times tables, division, and you just keep going through flashcards over and over again with teachers or with yourself, and that's, I mean, that's how I learned it. And uh, it makes me feel like that repetition, drilling and killing, is there's no respect in it. Like, you don't get any credit for just literally practicing something over and over again and just well, I guess memorizing it or keep doing something until you you've memorized or you just remember it over and over again it seems like that gets discounted and, and that you, you're a better person if you can if your learning method is you learn to do it logically and, and all that but I, they're they're it must materialize in some other way where it you're a, you're better at I guess problem solving later on than just memorizing stuff and I guess now that I think about it it's I'm a person that's always just like learned by doing and I guess that means memorization and and things like that and it makes me it makes me feel like you're not as good as people that do it a different way I don't even know I don't even know I it feels like memorization is like is not an intelligent thing and that people want to um, I don't know like sugarcoat the term the, the way that you learn by memorization 
and I'm calling it something else. And I know, I know I'm confusing myself right now with what I'm trying to say, but I just, once again, I just feel so responsible for my daughter not being farther along because we didn't do enough basic practice over and over again, drilling and killing, drilling and killing. And just tell me what's wrong with drilling and killing and what's wrong with, I mean, that's, that's the way I feel like I coach volleyball and then, but you don't, your kids and your parents, they don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear the word drill and kill. And and I guess it's up to you as teachers and coaches to, you're supposed to, um, it feels like you're forced to keep creating the same situation to drill and kill in, but you call it something else. You call it a game or, or it's this or it's that. I guess my biggest question is what's wrong with simple drills and kills? Huh? What's wrong with literally saying we are going to practice this rotation over and over again because it's a situation that happens and we're just going to drill and kill it. And I guess the answer is that's boring. But it's not boring to me. Like I... I find... I guess the straightest line for me to mastery is... Is to just do it. And I feel like the way that I learned math... Was by memorizing 2 plus 2, 2 plus 3. And I just I just have this vivid memory of all the cards that um, that I was given uh, or I had a big stack and just do it, do it, do it, do it. And I almost want to say it was fun. <sighs> it feels like there's no, you can't, you can't do stuff that's not fun if it's the quickest way to mastery because it's not fun. And I guess you're not not getting the most I don't even know what I'm trying to say I guess I'm just always apprehensive to to the way that other people do it and then when it does when they're better than me at it (laughs) and they do it in a cool way then I'm jealous but not jealous enough to I guess copy and do it their way It seems like a good good coach is only as good as the players he, they produce and the wins that those players produce. But it doesn't seem like anyone ever says, speaks highly of coaches that lose a lot. And to me, it makes too much sense to just keep practicing the situations that are going to happen most often. Like serve, receive, if we're talking volleyball. Or like 2 plus 5. What is it? It's 7. Why? Because here's 5 oranges and here's 2 apples. When you put them all together, there's 7 fruits. And why is that? Because there just is. It's not wax intellectual about why or what. It's it's a fact. And the plus symbol, it's a fact that that's a, that means it's you add them together. And I guess I just don't need... I don't need to be all fogged up with the connection of all of it. I just just want the, I guess we just need the answers. And I guess all we're doing is talking about schooling and getting the right answer, but I don't know. It became a little bit clearer to me a year or two ago coaching that. I mean, there's, there's such a short season and not enough time to get all fancy and do a bunch of different drills you're probably better suited to just do the same four things over and over again until we master them or get better at them and that's a tough sell because that's gonna become boring to players that need all this instant gratification all the time and I guess they want to see and do something new 
but for me as the coach of the last eight seasons I've got a bigger sample size and I know what um how much time we have and what our capabilities are and what we should really do to approve them quick quicker I think or I'm just an average coach and I'm just trying to I'm just trying to band-aid the situation all the time it's probably more like it is I've never played professionally I didn't play in college I've never played on the sand past a few tournaments while I was still like in junior high or high school well what do I know other than I've just been around the high school sport the sport and the club just been around the, the indoor volleyball game since 2009 since fall of 2008 that's pretty much it I'm an avid watcher but that's about it have any real experience to speak of other than what I've observed and what I've watched over the the last um, 13 years I don't know makes more sense to me just to, to drill and, and kill and just to keep um, what's what's important to practice I guess at the forefront of what you're doing and uh And also, it just seems like uh, parent-teacher conferences, it's, it's such a formality, really. It's like, I bet you none of the teachers really want to do that. Or should they really rather just send a um, send an email and say, hey, this is where your kid's doing well, this is where they're not? But it's a formality that I guess you just, they just need to, they need to put eyes on you and then put some sort of judgment to you. And what you are doing. And basically, I guess, find out, are you a parent that's going to be helpful to the situation or not? That sounds pretty, pretty negative. I think it's has to do with the population that I worked with when I was still working at school. Those were rough kids. And we really didn't have very much parent interaction or parent help. But, um... Yeah, I mean, it was nice. It was nice to hear them say some nice things, some encouraging things. Um, makes me wonder if if she was a bench player that it was difficult for them to come up with some nice things to say. Because nobody wants to... I bet, I bet you even teachers, they don't want to come and just say all the bad things that are happening. Um, unless you're all cold-blooded like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was thinking of that too. All the, all the banquet uh, speakings I've done, and or, or when you're writing the senior, um, the senior award, uh, not awards, but the little, little blurps that they talk about the seniors over the, uh, over the microphone with. Um, some of them are difficult because the kids are neither good nor bad. They're just medium, and and maybe they didn't play very much. I guess. I guess school is a different thing because they're getting involved more. It's not a, it's not a competition. So I understand that. Sorry, just just thinking more, and uh, we had parent-teacher conferences in uh, in pr- uh, uh, preschool, but this was the first real one, and I don't really count the Zoom conference um, for kindergarten. Kindergarten is not really excuse me the biggest sitch if you ask me um but yeah it was teacher seems nice 
it just seems also that we're we're just not it's it's such a detached um, it's just like a detachment with the COVID and like I think when my parents came to pick me up like they could walk right onto the campus and I mean not that I don't also when I go pick her up from after school program but um you know wear the mask and the checking out and all that and you just can't show up on campus anymore and uh it's just I don't know it seems seems odd not odd but um seems so much different than when I was in, when I was in school, um, and different in that, um, oh God, what am I trying to say, um, different in that, uh, know, it's just more, like, is the word protected? I'm trying to say. I mean, obviously, because of COVID, I understand it's more protected in that um, aspect. But I don't know. They, it just seemed a lot more open. Um, but I wonder if my parents felt like this too. I mean, no. I know my folks were a lot more involved because my mom was a teacher, and and she's always been involved. I think that's what I'm. I think it's just, I think I'm trying to make excuses for myself by blaming it on COVID in the school. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if you want to be involved, you got to make an effort to be involved. And I think just once again, it's, um, I'm just, I'm an introvert. I'm not a, I'm not a, um, I guess I'm not an outgoing person. Um, I don't think I'm a tough person to approach, but I'm not, I don't really go out of my way to make the first, um, introduction or effort or, um, yeah. And I, I want to be, um, different. I want to be, I want to be that. I guess I'm just not a very charismatic um, and comfortable in every situation. Um, yeah, just kind of a worry wart. I think I kind of get that from, from, uh, from my mom. But I wish I wasn't so, um, I think it's just concerned with what other people think or what they see. Hmm. But it's like, if I really cared, why would I not, like, dress nicer or cut my hair or shave more often? Hmm. Or pursue something that I was, I'm really into? And then, I mean, there's that loaded question. It's, I think I'm still... <laughs> still searching I think I I mean I know activities that I like to do but I do them less as I've gotten older because I think I'm just tired old ass should have shaved I don't know. I keep trying to remind myself, though, like, it's only, there's only one life, and, uh, it's important to keep that on the, on the forefront, so, and you're more encouraged to do, do things that you, that you love and you're passionate about. I know volleyball is one of those things, but. I should be doing something else and making more money and enjoying it more. Mm, just not sure what that is. And I, I just feel myself kind of sliding into 
the next like 40 years of my life and it doesn't look terrible but it seems pretty um I can see where it's going um not content but it seems pretty easy it seems pretty um mellow it seems the foreseeable future seems like it's gonna go <laughs> the way that it's going right now I'm not sure if I'm supposed to quit coaching or just one of them or all of them or when is the right time to force my kids to play volleyball or just hope that they want to play volleyball I think that I've always been just, I'm going to get some Wendy's right now, but um, I've always been confused about when you just pull the trigger and go for it, go for something, I guess. There's a homeless person over there. Actually, I'm... <sighs> Maybe today I'll, I'll figure it out. If not today, maybe uh, tomorrow. <laughs>